Hey, Awaken City, it's so good to join you as we bring to our land our focus on uh, living the journey and what it means to have the type of faith that impacts our day-to-day lives. Oh, I'm convinced that every single one of us in our journey of faith all have the opportunity and the freedom to choose what we follow. Oh, I believe that in choosing to follow Jesus for ourselves, the implication is that we allow God to change us along the way because as we follow Jesus, it's not just about the direction of our life. It's about allowing Jesus to work in us by His Spirit to shape us and mould us into the people that God created us to be in the first place. Now, I'm mindful as we bring this series to a close, as we focus on the freedom to follow, that there's a psalm, Psalm 119, that is the longest psalm in the entire book of Psalms. Actually, it's the longest psalm chapter in the entire Bible, if you consider it like that, it's 176 verses. The psalmist wrote this psalm with a desire to unpack and convey how when you get the Word of God in you, it bursts out of you and the way that you live your life. It impacts and influences and brings life and vitality to everything that you are. And in Psalm 119, in verse 32, the psalmist writes this, I run in the path of your commandments for you have set my heart free. That boggles the mind a little bit that the psalmist would bring this thought that we are able and called to run in the commandments that God would lead us into, into the, into the inflections, into the desires of the heart of God. But in that, in that running in that, we live our life truly free. It seems to go against the idea of what true freedom is, that we, we think freedom is something where there is no maybe commandments, there is no rules as such, there is no guidance, there is nothing to give us a framework for life. But yet here in Psalm 119 verse 32, the psalmist unpacks, I believe, the reality for every single one of us that to live our lives truly free, it means that we choose to follow the one who created life in the first place. There's two people that come to mind that interacted with Jesus in His earthly ministry that encapsulate what it means to have the freedom to follow or the freedom to choose not to. There's a portion that unpacks in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, about a man who is known as the rich young ruler. He's not mentioned with that title in the Scriptures directly, but if you're reading along in a YouVersion Bible app or if you've got one of those things which is actually a physical Bible, often the publishers will put almost like section headings so that you know where you're heading into as you're reading the Scriptures. And more often than not, the section heading for this part of the Scriptures in Mark 10, 17, will say there, the rich young ruler. Because it unpacks in the account of a person who was rich and is implied that they're young and is somebody in authority coming into an opportunity to follow Jesus for themselves. But in that we see the reality that for every single one of us, we are all free to choose what we do. We are all free to respond to Jesus however we respond. And it's Jesus' heart to invite us to have the freedom to follow Him. It says this in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. As He, talking about Jesus, was setting out on a journey. I just have to pause there for a moment. It's all a journey. Jesus is on a journey. He's on a journey to people with people. See, wherever He's going, He's walking. He's travelling at a pace that isn't too hard to keep up with. He's not zipping off in a way where people can just struggle to keep up with Him and, 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 and have to go at their maximum pace. No, 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 Jesus is walking from village to village in Judea at the time and different parts of the region. And He's walking two people. He's walking to have encounters with people. He's walking to meet people along the way. He's walking to respond to people as they reach out to Him. But He's also walking with people. 
Jesus was alone in nothing that he did. Jesus would often invite people to come follow him. And the shocking thing that you find in the scriptures is that people would often at times leave aside everything they had to follow him. So the freedom to follow Jesus is offered to every single one of us because Jesus is on the journey with us. He's on the journey to people with people. So Mark 10, 17, as he, Jesus, was setting out on a journey, a man ran up. He ran up with urgency and knelt down before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded, why do you call me good? Jesus asked him, no one is good except God alone. I think Jesus there is highlighting the fact that this person who's run up to him with urgency, who we'll find in a moment is the rich young ruler, has cottoned on to the fact that Jesus is much more than simply a normal teacher, a rabbi going from place to place. He is the good teacher. And Jesus emphasises that by unpacking the reality that He's good because He is God. He is the one we're following. He is the one worth laying down all other things to choose to journey with. Verse 19, Jesus says to him, You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud. Honour your father and mother. Verse 20, he said to him, the rich young ruler replied, teacher, I've kept all these things from my youth. Looking at him, Jesus loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go sell all you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But he was dismayed by this demand and he went away grieving because he had many possessions. The rich young ruler is an account for me of somebody who clearly recognises that Jesus is the one worth following, who clearly sees, who's clearly drawn to the reality that true freedom is found in following Jesus. With the urgency that he runs to him, with the urgency that he kneels down to him, with the urgency of his question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? There's no more important question for any one of us to ask. How do I get out of this living life in in brokenness, in, 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 in the motions of being caught up in this broken world? How do I leapfrog that to get into the eternal perspective that the heart of God has and what He would call me into? How do I enter into that? And it's interesting that in this account, Jesus pushes this man's buttons. It's shocking. To think that at the opportunity that Jesus has to onboard this person, to say, great, you're, you're, you're willing, you're able, wonderful. And to onboard him and to get him going. To, if it was all about numbers for Jesus, here's an opportunity to add one more quite easily. But it's not. It's about genuine authenticity. It's about the real. It's about living the journey. And Jesus, knowing the heart of the rich young ruler, pushes his buttons. He does it by identifying the commandments that those in Judaism were commanded to live under, the Ten Commandments, which basically break down into two main subjects, how to love God well and how to love people well. And he lists off those things of what it means to love people in their context, don't murder, that's a good thing. Yeah, don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honour your father and mother. He's unpacking the reality of what it means to love people. But Jesus goes further than that in identifying that in the heart of this rich young ruler, that possibly his identity, his focus, was too much on the possessions that he had and there wasn't enough room available for him in his heart to fit all that and a decision to follow Jesus for himself. 
It's interesting, Jesus said nothing like this to many of the others who followed Him. Because Jesus caters the journey for each and every one of us. And here's the truth. As you choose to follow Jesus for yourself at whatever point, whether you're just starting out, or you've been following Jesus for a long period of time, whether you've been in and out or whatever, Jesus will push your buttons. He will expose the things by His Spirit that we put our trust in even above Him. Now, He may not tell you by His Spirit to sell all your possessions and give it to the poor, but He will lead you by His Spirit to yield and lay down some of these things that take and captivate our attention, that take us away from being able to hear Him, to follow Him and to be with Him. Sometimes He might call you to drastic actions, to make a difference. Jesus isn't above calling us to sacrifice because He sacrificed everything so that we could be made right with Him. So the opportunity stands for the rich young ruler and he walks away. Here's the thought. Jesus isn't chasing. There's freedom to follow. While the opportunity is always there for him, I imagine, to have come back, Jesus allows him to make his own call. And it's interesting that the Scripture clearly unpacks Jesus loves him. Jesus is clear. Jesus is concise, and in that He's also loving. So He wants every single one of us to run in God's commandments, in in His leading, in His framework for life, so that our hearts can be free. And the rich young ruler left that opportunity to follow Jesus for himself with his freedom there with Jesus as he walked away back into whatever it was that captivated his focus and his attention apart from God. The good news of the Scriptures is that it's not just accounts like that. But this is what I love about the Bible is that it's honest. It, it, it unpacks the reality of people and the decisions that they can make for themselves. You don't read the Bible to see the perfect things happening all the time. You read the Bible to see a loving, perfect God working with a humanity that time after time has the freedom to choose what they follow. And what I love is captured in another account in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 27, about another young man who would have been wealthy and had great possessions. A young man who, whose name was Levi. Levi had worked, it seems for a season at least, as a tax collector. And in the culture of our day, we maybe have an invisible tax collector where our pay automatically is deducted and taxes are sent off and however you feel about that. But in the day of Jesus as Judea, his country, was occupied by an outside force, the Roman Empire. One of the oppressive things that was put on them as a people was to pay taxes to Rome. They were to fill the coffers of their rulers and the ones that had dominated them and were now keeping them under their reign. And so a tax collector in that day was often somebody who was a community member, was a member from Judea themselves, was, was Jewish, was not a Roman, but was employed with the backing of Rome and with the support of the Roman centurions. And their job was basically to go door to door to door to door to door and to fundraise for the empire of Rome by at times forcibly taking and relieving people of their possessions so they could fill the coffers and pay the taxes that were never really their natural nation taxes to pay. Tax collectors at that time were hated. They were looked down on. They were considered betrayers of their own people. And if you were a tax collector, you embraced it and you were well off. It says this in Luke chapter 5, verse 27. 
After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So leaving everything behind, he, Levi, got up and began to follow him. Then Levi hosted a grand banquet for him at his house. Now there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others who were reclining at the table with him. But the Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus replied to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a doctor, but those who are sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Here's a thought. Jesus had met a rich young ruler, given the opportunity, the freedom to follow him, was unwilling to let go of those things that captivated his focus, things that had become idols of his heart, his own possessions. And he meets somebody living on the fringes of that world, somebody rejected by his own people and gives him an opportunity to follow him. And Levi leaves it all behind and makes room for Jesus to the extent that he uses his own resources to host a banquet, to invite his friends around, to introduce to them this Jesus who is now freely chosen to follow And Jesus clarifies that He's there for this one express purpose, to fix the sickness that infects the heart of humanity. The sickness called sin. The sickness that causes people to get off track and and go outside of who they are called to be, to lose sight of who they're meant to be. And Jesus is the remedy. He is the medicine. He is what we need so that our hearts can be made free. And He does this by leading us and giving us a framework to live out what it is to really follow Him. And as as we follow Him, we enter into true freedom where things don't hold us back and pull us back, where where we're challenged as followers of Jesus to embrace a culture of forgiveness, where we keep no record of wrong, where we're released quickly so that our hearts can remain free, where we are the type of people who when we see a need, we meet a need because we understand that we are called to love people just as we're called to love God. They were called to live out the reality of our faith as we live the journey. You know, I want to encourage you at whatever point this thought, this message finds you, you are called and invited to follow Jesus for yourself. If you have been following Jesus, remaining faithful, can I encourage you? Keep up with the journey. Let Him change you along the way. But if this finds you for whatever reason, maybe not having yet crossed over to the lines of faith, and to decide for yourself to follow Jesus. Can I challenge you today? Make the choice for yourself that you will choose to follow Jesus. Take a moment to pray, to talk to God directly and say, I'm sorry for going in my own direction. I I repent. I choose to turn around and head towards you and to follow you. And whether you're praying that prayer for the first time or whether you are re-engaging with your faith, let us know. Email us at hello at awakencity.com.au and allow us the privilege to support and encourage you in any way we can along the journey. You are free to follow. God bless. Have an amazing week.